Lord, today. As we come today, Father, we pray for one another. We intercede. We call out the name of that person whose hands we hold. And we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who join us via internet and other technolo technological means. We pray today and intercede for your miracle working power to step into everybody's life. Father, we pray and pray that you would open up the doors that you want us to walk through. Close the doors you don't want us walking through. Somebody needs a financial blessing. Granted, somebody needs a job. Somebody needs a promotion. Somebody needs their marriage healed. Somebody's praying for their children. Father, whatever the prayer need, we know that you will incline your ear to outcry, and you'll grant it in the name of the Lord. And so we pray that you work out miracles, that you resolve it and fix it. And we declare Good morning, man of God. Bless you. Thank you. Pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. Good morning, Sue. Blessings to you. Pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. Good morning, everyone. If you have any prayer requests or praise reports, please let us know. Any prayer requests or praise reports. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Jonathan. Blessings to you. Come on, somebody say it's turning around for me. It's turning around for me. It's turning around for you, Sue. It's turning around for you, D. Arthur. It's turning around for you, Jonathan. perfects that which concerns us. Thank you, Lord. If you have any praise reports or prayer requests, please let us know. I would like to pray. Father, we pray for Marquise Mathis as he travels to Pensacola. We thank you that you've given your angels charge over him to keep him in his way. Thank you for no incidents, no accidents in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for a day of productivity, a day of power. We give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that over your life. It's turning around for you. It's turning around for you. Thank you, Lord. It's turning in your favor. Good morning, Wendy. Blessings to you. Pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. It's turning around for you, Wendy. It's turning around for you, Lois. It's turning around for you, Jennifer. It's turning around for you. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord.
Father, we thank you for traveling mercies for Wendy and her grandchildren. Thank you for a productive day. Thank you that you've given your angels charge over her to keep her and everything connected to her. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It won't always be like this. Somebody decree and declare that it won't always be like this. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we believe you. Oh, God, we believe you. Thank you, Lord. It turns in your favor. Good morning, Lois. Blessings to you. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody speak it. It's turning around for me. It's turning around for me. In every area of your life, it's turning around for you. In your health, it's turning around. In your finances, it's turning around. In your family, it's turning around. In your marriage, it's turning around. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for Lois as you bring all those things back to her remembrance as she has test week thank you for peace thank you for boldness and we thank you for a favorable outcome in the name of Jesus let your peace overshadow her we thank you for the strength and the focus in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Well, good morning. We pray that you all are doing well. The song said, sooner or later, it will turn in my favor. It's turning around for me. I don't know about you, but I believe that with all my heart. Because God shall perfect that which concerns us. God will perfect that which concerns us. He watches over his word to perform it. He always makes a way of escape so that you can bear whatever you are going through. Anytime you say, I can't take this, this is too much, when it gets to be where well, you cannot handle it, the Lord knows how to make a way of escape. So we trust him today. We look to him. And we say that all of our needs are met. We say that we are healed, whole, and healthy. And we thank him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, blessings to you all. Pray that you're doing well. Your families are doing well. Let's go today to the word. Hallelujah. Let's go to Proverbs 24 and 10. Proverbs 24 and 10. Proverbs 24 and 10, please. Proverbs 24 and 10. Proverbs 24 and 10. Thank you, mighty God. Proverbs 24 and 
content. Do me a favor as you come on, just put the number 58 slash uncommon seed. 58 slash uncommon seed. Those of you who are partners with us, we start off the month with a $58 seed and we'll be sowing an uncommon seed. Thank you, Lois. 58 slash uncommon seed. Seed. Thank you. 58 slash uncommon seed. Proverbs 24 and 10. Proverbs 24 and 10. And the scripture says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. We want to talk this morning, uh, don't faint. Don't faint. Somebody write that down. Don't faint. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thy faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. There are some things that you will not learn about yourself until the day of adversity comes. When pressure is applied to your life, whatever's inside will come out. And the scripture said, if thou faint, in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Let's talk today. Another word uh, I want to use is crisis. Crisis is common to life. Everyone has crisis. Some one thing, some another thing. But if you live this life, you will find yourself in a crisis. So it's not whether you go through a crisis, it's how you respond to the crisis that you're going through. And the scripture said, if you faint in the day of adversity, thy faith is, thy strength is small. Okay. Well, how do I not faint in the day of adversity? How do I not faint in the day of adversity? Well, one way is that you have to get the proper perspective. Let's put it that you need God's perspective. Okay. You need to know that there is a purpose to everything. Okay. I told you yesterday, God is intentional. Everything has a purpose and nothing will be wasted. I want you to meditate on that. God is intentional. Everything has a purpose and nothing shall be wasted. Okay. So you need God's perspective on what you are going through. You can come up with many different scenarios, but you need God's perspective. God, what are you saying to me in this? God, what are you trying to show me? Lord, what do you want me to learn from this situation? Okay. And many times what we think is negative is not negative. Because a crisis never comes to cause decline. A crisis never comes to cause decline. Write that down, please. A crisis never comes to cause decline. A crisis comes to take you from one level to another level. It never comes to cause decline. 
it comes to take you from one level to another level. When we used to live in New York, Long Island, there were trees in the yard. Thank you, Lois. When we lived in New York, Long Island, there were trees in the yard that were not growing. So we went to the nursery to find out what can we do to cause the trees to grow. When we got there, the man at the nursery said, all you have to do is beat the tree a little at the trunk. At the trunk of the tree, beat the tree a little at the trunk. And it will start growing. Well, of course, I thought the guy was joking because I had never heard that before. And he said, when you beat the tree at the trunk of the tree, it goes into crisis. Good morning, Dina. Blessings to you. We're in Proverbs 24 and 10. He said, when you beat the tree at the trunk of the tree, the author, the tree goes into crisis. Its response to the crisis is to grow. And it becomes fruitful and protects itself. So he said, when you beat that tree at the trunk, it grows, goes into crisis and its defense mechanism is to grow. That's how it protects itself. And I said, whoa. He says, when it goes into crisis, Wendy, it becomes more productive as a defense mechanism. That was a powerful revelation. He said, when it goes into crisis, Sue, it becomes more productive as a defense mechanism. Well, when I heard that right away, what came to me is when Jesus in John 15 said about pruning, that he prunes us that we will be more fruitful. And the cutting back, the crisis seems like I'm losing, but actually it's causing me to be more productive. And I want to encourage you that as you go through whatever crisis you are in, it's going to cause you to be more productive. You're not going to go down, but you're going to go up. My God, somebody received that? Somebody received that. Tap that screen if you received that word. That is a powerful revelation that when the tree is beat at the trunk of the tree, the tree goes into crisis. And as a defense mechanism, it begins to become more productive. So the same thing that happens to the tree will also happen to us. What we go through will make us more productive. Proverbs 24 and 10 says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. So just like that tree, once we begin to beat it at the trunk, it then began to produce. So remember, a crisis never comes to cause decline. It always comes to take you from one level to another level. Write this down, please. Write this down. We live life on levels. We arrive in stages. We live life on levels. 
we arrive in stages. We live life on levels. We arrive in stages. So a crisis takes me and it comes to take me from one level to another level. It doesn't come to cause decline. Thank you. We live life on levels. We arrive in stages. Okay. Each stage takes us to another level. Each stage takes us to another level. So we live life on levels. We arrive in stages. And each stage takes us to another level. Okay. Each stage takes us to another level. Another level of responsibility, another level of authority, and another level of knowledge. We live life on levels. We arrive at stages, and each stage takes us to another level of responsibility, another level of authority, and another level of knowledge. That movement comes by way of crisis. That movement comes by level, by way of crisis. So that movement that you make comes by way of crisis. Each stage takes you to another level. Write those three things down. We live life on levels. We arrive in stages. Each stage takes us to another level of responsibility, another level of authority, and another level of knowledge. So crisis comes to bring you into a greater understanding gives you a greater authority because it shows you what is in you. It shows you what to work on. It shows you what to strengthen. So it's a good thing. Not a bad thing. So the scripture said, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So it's not a bad thing. It's just showing you that when adversity comes, it's going to show you the area that is weak so it can be strengthened. So the next time, you will not fall. There's an old saying that crisis reveals cracks. It shows you where you need to be strengthened. It shows you the areas that are weak. Okay? But that's a good thing. Tap that screen, please. So crisis becomes a turning point. It becomes a turning point where you and I decide how we're going to respond. You and I decide what direction we will go, whether this will make us better or whether this will make us bitter. We are the deciding factor of the outcome of every crisis. Uh, yesterday, there was a lady on Facebook and I had wrote something and she said, uh, you make it seem easy. I was saying, don't be distracted and don't allow it to move you. So the person wrote in the comments, you make it seem so easy. And so I didn't write anything, but I thought for a second, I said, both of those things is a choice. 
So when I said don't be distracted or don't allow it to move you, it's a choice. That's how simple it is. It is simple. She was right. It is simple because you are the deciding factor. So if you are distracted, you chose to be. If you are not moved, you chose not to be moved. So it's just a choice that a person makes. So there's an old saying that I've said for years, when things go wrong, don't go with it. Things will always go wrong. Things will happen that will be out of your control. But how you respond to it, that's the only thing I can control. I can't control what happened, but I can control how I respond to what happened. Good morning, Kadia. Blessings to you. We're in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. Proverbs 24 and 10. And it says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. So we're talking from the subject, don't faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. The Bible says, man ought always to pray and not faint. Also, the scripture says, don't get weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. So we see that word faint all throughout scripture. Okay? And it commands us to not faint. And it shows us what we can do in order not to faint. Man ought always to pray and not faint. So it connects praying with not fainting. It connects a life of prayer with not fainting. So the opposite would be when I do not pray, I will faint. But when I pray, it will strengthen me so I won't faint. So another scripture says, In everything, give thanks. And then it says, Pray about everything. Worry about nothing. Pray about everything. And everything with prayer and supplication Make your request known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your heart and mind. So guess what? It shows you what is the result when I make my request known unto God. What is the result? When I make my request known unto God, this is how I know I've done it properly. Because when I do it, the peace of God overshadows me. The peace of God keeps my heart and mind. So today, my prayer for you is that the peace of God will overshadow you. The peace of God will guard your heart and guard your mind. Notice what it guards. It guards your heart and it guards your mind. You only place a guard in front of or around things that are valuable. So the Bible teaches you that your heart is valuable. Why? Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. So whatever you allow in your heart, it will show up in your life. So your heart is very Important. Good morning, Candace. Blessings to you. We are in Proverbs 24 and 10. Proverbs 24 and 10. So the peace of God guards your heart and it guards your mind. So the heart and the mind, according to scripture, are very valuable because there's a God placed around it. So God wants to keep your emotions together. He wants to keep your thoughts together because when you and I go through a crisis, it is easy for our minds to be all over the place. It is easy for our emotions to be all over the place. But when we 
take that situation and we give it over to the Lord. He has a way of causing his peace to guard our heart and guard our mind. And notice what the scripture says. The peace of God surpasses all understanding. Okay. So it's teaching you that you don't have to understand in order to have peace. The reason why many times we don't have peace is because we're trying to understand. We're trying to make sense of everything that we're going through. But when I'm going through it, I may not know how or what is going on, but if I allow the peace of God to guard my heart and guard my mind, then guess what? It keeps my thoughts together. It keeps my emotions together. Thank you. So that I will not be moved. So that I will not think. Tap that screen if you're receiving. Tap that screen this morning. We're talking about crisis. We're talking about how we respond to crisis. And you will respond correctly when you have the right perspective of a crisis. If you don't have the right perspective, you will not respond right. A crisis is not against you. A crisis works for you. It is coming to take you to another level. Another level of knowledge. So after you come through that crisis, you will know more than what you knew before. It's coming to take you to another level of authority. Now, once you come through it, you would have overcome something which allows you to have another level of authority. And then lastly, it gives you another level of responsibility. Now you understand the process of this situation. Now you understand that everything that comes your way is to better you. Write that down, please. Everything that comes your way is to better you. Write that down. Everything that comes your way is to better you. Write that down. Everything that comes your way is to better you. Everything that comes your way is to better you. You've got to get the right perspective. Everything that comes your way, Wendy, is to better you. Everything that comes your way, Kadia, is to better you. Everything that comes your way, Candace, is to better you. Everything that comes your way, Lois, is to better you. Everything that comes your way, D. Arthur, is to better you. Everything that comes your way, Dina, is to better you. Everything that comes your way, Sue, is to better you. Okay? Crisis, write this in capital letters, crisis never comes to us to cause decline. Crisis never comes to us to cause decline. It's always taking us higher. Good morning, Anthony. Blessings to you. Crisis never comes to us to cause decline. Crisis comes to us to take us to another level. It comes to us to take us to another level. Level. Thank you, Wendy. Crisis never comes to us to cause decline. Okay. I need you to write these down because they're going to help you. Okay. Crisis never comes to us to cause decline. It comes to take us to another level. Another level of what? responsibility. Another level of what? Authority. Another level of what? Knowledge. 
three things. It's taking me to another level of responsibility. I become more responsible. It takes me to another level of authority. I begin to walk in authority. It takes me to another level of knowledge. Now I know things I did not know before. Now I'm more equipped because now I know things. Thank you, Wendy. Excellent. Good. It comes to take you to another level of responsibility, authority, and knowledge. That is the movement of the crisis. That is the purpose of the crisis. Okay, Write this down. Crisis comes to show us the areas of our life that need to be strengthened because they are weak. Crisis comes to show us the areas of our life that need to be strengthened because they are weak. Okay? The crisis comes to show us the areas of our life that need to be strengthened because they are weak. That's why I said earlier that crisis reveals cracks. If you want to know the cracks in your life, if you want to know the weak places in your life, all you got to do is go through a crisis, and a crisis will reveal the cracks. Thank you, Kadir. Good. Excellent. Good. Here, crisis comes to reveal and to show us the areas in our lives that need to be strengthened because they're weak. So you should thank God for crisis. It's common. You should thank God for crisis. Okay. Good. Good, Wendy. Excellent. 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 Tap that screen if you're receiving. Thank you. Anthony, blessings to you. Excellent. Tap that screen. Good, good. If you're receiving today, tap that screen. All right, let me give you three more things about crisis. Number one, crisis exposes your limitations. Good morning, Valerie. Blessings to you. Good morning, Willie. Good morning, Tempest, Tina, Timber. Good morning, children. Crisis exposes your limitations. Crisis exposes your limitations. Write that down. Crisis exposes your limitations. It comes to show you the areas of your life that need to be strengthened because they're weak. So it exposes your limitations. It exposes your limitations. Next, crisis creates a problem to be solved. Thank you, Anthony. Number two, crisis creates a problem to be solved. So not only does it expose your limitations, not only does it show you the areas that need to be strengthened because they're weak, it creates a problem to be solved. It shows you the area and then it gives you the opportunity to solve it. So before, you can't change what you don't confront. Good morning, Kiana. Blessings to you. How's your son doing? Good. Good. Crisis exposes your limitations. Crisis creates a problem to be solved. You can't correct what you don't confront. You can't confront what you're not aware of. So the crisis makes you aware of it. Okay? Excellent. Ex oh, awesome. 
Father, we thank you for the surgery, that it went well, it was a success. We thank you for a full and speedy recovery in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak strength, wholeness, and health in Jesus' name. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Write this down, please. You can't correct what you don't confront. You can't correct what you don't confront. You can't confront what you're not aware of. So the crisis comes to make you aware of it. Once you are aware of it, you can confront it. And once you confront it, you can change it. Wow. Okay. I see that. That's a powerful process. You got that, Wendy? You can't change what you don't confront. But you can't confront what you're not aware of. So the crisis comes to make you aware of it. It exposes your limitations. Good. Thank you, Kiana. Good. You can't correct what you don't confront. Good. Okay. And then you can't confront what you're not aware of. So the crisis comes to show you the areas that need to be strengthened because they're weak. It exposes your limitations. The crisis creates a problem to be solved. And then next, crisis takes you to another level of knowledge. 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 It now shows you something you did not know before. So it never came to cause decline. It only came to take you from one level to another level. Good. Excellent. Okay. Crisis brings clarity. That's powerful. Put that in capital letters for me. Somebody put that in capital letters. Crisis brings clarity. Crisis brings clarity. It now shows me something. Thank you, Wendy. I did not know before. Good. Thank you, Kadia. Crisis brings clarity. Thank you, Anthony. Now watch this. Kiana, watch this, Sue. Watch this, the author. Watch this, Lois. Watch this. Life is cloudy until you get clarity. Life is cloudy until you get clarity. You will go through life stumbling because life is cloudy until you get clarity. Crisis brings clarity because it shows you the areas in your life that need to be strengthened because they are weak. So crisis takes you to another level, another level of responsibility. Crisis takes you to another level, another level of authority. Crisis takes you to another level, another level of knowledge. 
The Lord wants you to have a quality of existence on this earth. Okay. He wants you to have an eternal perspective. I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That word for life is eternal life. He says, I want you to have eternal life. Good. Thank you. That's right. John 10 and 10. I want you to have eternal life. Okay. Now, most people think eternal life starts when you go to heaven. Eternal life begins the moment you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Eternal life begins the moment you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay? Eternal life begins the moment you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And then it continues you continues after you die. It continues after you die. But it starts the moment you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now notice, when you accept Christ, you now have an eternal perspective. You now, it brings you a perspective from the viewpoint of God. Now you no longer see things from a worldly perspective, you begin to see things from God's viewpoint. So now you realize that a crisis is not coming to me to take me down. A crisis is coming to me to take me to another level. Write this down, capital letters. Get ready to go to another level. Write that down. Get ready to go to another level. My God, anybody in a crisis right now, if you're in a crisis right now, then get ready to go to another level. Don't fight. Don't fight against the crisis. Submit to the process. Because its job is to take you to another level. It is not coming to frustrate you. It is not coming to take you down. It is not coming to defeat you. It is coming to take you to another level. It has a way of showing you things. Back to our original scripture. It said, if you faint, Proverbs 24 and 10, Kadia, the scripture said, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you faint, Wendy, Anthony, De Deanna, Dina, Kadia, Kiana, Lois, the author, Sue, Sonia, Michelle, Evangelist Bryant, Michael, Jennifer, Lois, Lisa. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. You cannot know your strength. Unless the day of adversity comes. You cannot know your strength unless the day of adversity comes. You want that day to come. 
Because when that day comes, it will reveal the areas you need to strengthen. It will show you where you are. It will show you who you are. And it will bring you to another level of responsibility. You will begin to say, I need to tighten up this area. It'll bring you to another level of authority. Why? Because you'll have knowledge. And that knowledge gives you power. So it brings you to another level of responsibility. Hey, I got to tighten up in this area. It brings you to another level of authority. Now, I'm aware of things that I have power over. It brings me to another level of knowledge. Now I know something I did not know before. So now I can better prepare myself. Now I'm more equipped to handle. Now I know where to safeguard. See, when that crisis came, it showed me the areas that need to be strengthened. So now I'm covered. Okay. See, what you think is a setback, it may be a setup. What you think is a setback may be a setup. What you think is a tragedy may be a transition. Let me say that again. Write those two words down. Set up. I mean, set back, set up. Write that down. Set back, set up. Tragedy, transition. Write those two words down, please. Set back, set up. Tragedy, transition. Anthony, you may be calling it a setback. And God is saying it's a setup. Wendy, you may be calling it a tragedy. And God says it is a transition. It is not the end. It is not a period. It is a comma. Notice John 15. John 15. Watch this. John 15. This is powerful. John 15. Verse 2. John 15 and 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh it away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. So guess what? Sometimes what you think is a setback is really a setup. What you think is a tragedy is really a transition. Even when you're bearing fruit, Candace, the Lord will prune you. And see, pruning means to cut back. See, a pruning is to cut back, Kadir. It's a cutting back of the branch. It looks like you're losing. But the pruning process, Sue, is to bear more fruit. Could it be that what you think is a setback is really a setup to cause you to become more productive? What you think is a tragedy is really a transition. Jesus was crucified. But in order for him to rise from the grave, he had to die. What looked like 
a tragedy was really a transition. It was taking him from one place to another place. And I decree and declare that what you are going through is not a setback. It is a setup. I decree and declare that what you are going through is not a tragedy. It is a transition. God is using it to take you from one place to another. What you think was a tragedy, it is only a transition. What you think was a setback, it's really a setup. Hear me, my God, hear me. Jesus, watch this, was not buried. He was planted. Jesus, Anthony, was not buried. He was planted. See, it's according to your perspective. Most people think he was buried. When you bury somebody or something, you're saying it's over. But Jesus was not buried. He was planted. And when you plant something, you expect something to come up. My God, I want to encourage you this morning that that crisis, that situation that you are in, it is not designed to bury you. It was designed to plant you. And after the smoke clears, after a while, you're coming back. You're coming back stronger. You're coming back to a new level of responsibility. You're coming back to another level of authority. You're coming back to another level of knowledge. You be encouraged. You will not faint. You will not faint in the day of adversity. It won't always be like this. God shall perfect that which concerns you. It's going to work in your favor. Matter of fact, it's working in your favor. Things are turning around for you right now. Come on, somebody make that declaration. Things are turning around for me right now. Come on. Things are turning around for me right now. Things are turning around. Come on. Thank good. Things are turning around. Things are turning around. Things are turning around. Thank you, Lord. Things are turning around. Let's pray. Let's pray now. A situation has just come up. Uh, I have been alerted of a very crucial situation. Father, we intercede right now on behalf of this young man, on behalf of this young lady. You know the situation that has taken place. We give it to you. And Father, we thank you that the enemy will not have an advantage with this man or with this woman. We thank you now that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Bring your peace to the situation. Bring your power to the situation, and we thank you that it's turning. What the devil meant for evil, Father, you are turning it for your good. Father, we cover our young people. We cover our young boys. We cover our young girls. We thank you. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You will not get place. We will not give you place in their lives. And we thank you for the victory. We thank you, Lord, that the testimony shall come, that through this, what the devil meant for evil, you will turn it for good to the saving of souls. In Jesus' mighty name, it is so. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for helping me pray. Helping me pray. Father, we give you peace. Thank you, Lord. Father, we ask you to give the young lady peace right now. Give her peace. Give her peace. Even now. In the mighty name of Jesus. All right. If you received, if you received that word this morning, if you received that word this morning, tap that screen, please. Tap that screen if you received that word. This morning, 
Hallelujah. How many of you are blessed by the scope this morning? God really sent a word, a talent-made word for our lives. Hallelujah. Crisis comes to show me the areas that I need to strengthen because they are weak. It takes me to another level of responsibility. It takes me to another level of authority. And it takes me to another level of knowledge. Excellent. Good. All right. Well, blessings to each one of you. Do me a favor. Put down. Good. Excellent. Good. Yeah, he always makes a way of escape. Okay, write that down. God always makes a way of escape that you may be able to bear what you are going through. Okay. Okay. God always makes a way of escape. You got to know that. We love to talk about what we can't take. Oh, okay, yes. Matter of fact, she was telling me the other day I was talking with her online and she was telling me that her birthday is the same month as mine and it was. Okay, good. Excellent. All right. First Corinthians ten thirteen. First Corinthians ten thirteen. First Corinthians ten thirteen. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wow. Look how awesome God is. So if it gets to the place that it will crush you, God will make a way of escape. You're coming out of what you're presently in. As the song said earlier today, it won't always be like this. Come on. It won't always be like this. Don't you dare faint. Don't you dare faint. Because you shall reap if you faint not. All right, do me a favor. Put this down, please. 58 slash uncommon seed. 58 slash uncommon seed. As you know, we just came into a new month. Okay, every month we sow a $58 seed. 50 Jubilee, eight new beginnings, uncommon seed, as this first quarter has ended. The first quarter, thank you, Wendy, the first quarter in uh, the year. March, the ending of March was the first quarter of 2019. And we decree and declare that your second, third, and fourth quarter will begin to produce un precedent results, uncommon results, record-breaking numbers in every area of your life. Many companies make billion dollars of profits in the second, third, and fourth quarter. We're believing God that this will be the year of your turnaround, your breakthrough in every area of your life, that once you come out of this situation, you will not ever go back again. The Bible said this enemy you will see no more forever. This enemy you will see no more forever. All right, as we close, I want to speak the seven blessings over your life. I pray that each one of you have been uh, speaking these seven blessings over your life. Me and my wife are coming into agreement with you. For these seven blessings, I hope you've been uh, agreeing with us. Number one, that this year you will receive a hundredfold return. Okay, If you agree with that, say, I receive it. This year 
you will receive a hundredfold return. Number two, you will wax great. Number three, you will become very great. Number four, the world will envy you. Number five, nothing or no one will stop your flow. Number six, you will be fruitful in the land. Good, Val. Number seven, God is making room for you. Number one, you will receive a hundredfold return. You will receive a hundredfold return this year. Number two, Dina, you will wax great. Number three, you will become very great. Number four, the world will envy you. Number five, nothing or no one will stop your flow. Number six, you will be fruitful in the land. And number seven, God is making room for you. If you receive those seven blessings, I want you to tap that screen. If you receive those seven blessings, I decree and declare that those seven blessings shall manifest in your life. I decree and declare that the seven blessings shall manifest in Sue's life, shall manifest in Val's life, Willie's life, Tina's life, Timber's life, Kadia's life, Kiana's life, Michelle's life, Evangelist Bryant's life, Deanna's life, Dina's life, Anthony's life, James' life, Wendy's life, Daniel's life, that these seven blessings will manifest for Lois, Manifest for Jennifer. Manifest for Lisa. Manifest for Kiana. Manifest for Michael. Manifest for Tony. Manifest for Terrell. Manifest for Felicia. Manifest for Alexis. Manifest for Rodney. We thank you that these seven blessings will overtake the people of God. Sonia. Yes, Lord. Sue. These seven blessings, Val, these seven blessings will overtake the people of God. Not only will they decree and declare it, they will see it and possess it. Not only will I decree and declare it, I will see it and possess it. For God watches over his word to perform it. We thank you for the performance. We thank you for the performance of these seven blessings. Come on, somebody write that down. Lord, we thank you for the performance of these seven blessings. Lord, we thank you for the performance of these seven blessings. Lord, we thank you for the performance of these seven blessings. Lord, we thank you for the performance of these seven blessings. Lord, we thank you for the performance of these seven blessings. In the name of Jesus, we will tell of your goodness. We will tell of your power. We will tell of your greatness. You will cause us to be a sign and a wonder. We thank you. We thank you for the performance of these seven blessings in the lives of your people. We knit our faith together in agreement. You said if any two would touch and agree, you would be in the midst. And whatever they ask, it shall be done. So we come into agreement with Wendy. We come into agreement with Val. We come into agreement with Kadia. We come into agreement with Daniel. We come into agreement with uh, James. We come into agreement with Alexis. We come into agreement with the author. We come into agreement with Kiana, Kadia. We come into agreement with Tony. We come into agreement with Anthony. We come into agreement with Felicia. We come into agreement with Lois. We come into agreement with Terrell. We come into agreement with Willie. We come into agreement for total restoration in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give you praise. 
I speak the word Gilead. The word Gilead means heaps of testimonies. I speak the word Gilead upon every one of you. Heaps of testimonies. That's what the word Gilead means. Heaps of testimonies. I pray that you will begin to experience one thing after another. I speak Gilead over your life, Sue. Heaps of testimonies. As you turn to the left, things will begin to happen. And while you're turning that way, things are happening on the right. And as you're turning that way, things are happening in front of you. As you're turning that way, things begin to happen behind you. Heaps of testimonies. Heaps of testimonies. Lord, I thank you for the testimonies that shall come from this word in the lives of the people. In Jesus' mighty name, it is so. All right, if you receive that word today, just tap that screen. If you receive that word today, tap that screen. If you were blessed by this, oh, if you are blessed by this broadcast, we want to give you an opportunity to sow into this ministry. Can somebody put our website down there, please? Can you put our website? Also, can you put, uh, you can give through the website. You can give through Cash App. Good, thank you. You can give through Cash App, which is dollar sign favorware. F-A-V-O-R-W-E-A-R. Somebody put that down there. You, If you have Cash App, I know a couple of you uh, use Cash App. If you do Cash App, it will be dollar sign F-A-V-O-R-W-E-A-R. Favor where? Ca the dollar sign Favor where? Those of you who do Cash App, you can do it through. Good. Dollar sign Favor where? Good. And then those of you who want to go through the website, it's there. And then those of you can give through Givelify. If you want to give through the app called Givelify, you can do that. You just go there, look under uh, nonprofits, and you put up there for His Glory Ministries, uh, Riverview, Florida, and it will allow you to give through Givelify. There are so many, three different ways you can give to the ministry. The website, Cash App, or Givelify. Someone was just telling me that the Givelify is very simple. Uh, and then somebody was telling me that the Cash App was another opportunity. Uh, good. Yeah, Givelify is, uh, yeah, Givelify, yes. For His Glory Ministries and you just put Riverview, Florida. And once you put that in the Givelify, it will allow you to uh, just, it's, it's like two or three things you do, and then it just goes right through, okay? So it just depends what is more convenient to you. Some people like using the Cash App. Some people like just going to the website. And some people in this new uh uh, pretty soon we will uh, have, uh, I, I think it's called text to give. You will be able to text to give. Uh, I'm in the process of talking with someone right now about that whole setup. So it'll just give people another opportunity. We're living in a technological world where people do that and it's just much easier for them to do that. Uh, so we thank God for you. Uh, remember, do something today to increase your value. Number two, keep seed in the ground. Number three, don't let anything steal your joy. Okay, good. Number four, use your words to frame your world. Yeah. When you go to Givelify, just put for his glory ministries, put the whole word for his glory ministries and just put uh, the city, Riverview, Florida, for his glory ministries, then Riverview, Florida. So that's how you look us up through there. All right. Well, continue to pray. 
we are making special prayers for our young people. We are making special prayers for our young people. Every day I'm receiving news about people's sons and daughters. Okay? So uh, we will fight for our young people. They are now. They are the future. And when I say future, I'm saying now. Okay? They are now. So we want to continue to fight for them and all of the different challenges that they're going through. Okay? When we were coming up, we had certain challenges. Now that they're coming up, it's a whole nother level. Okay? They're being exposed to things that we were never exposed to. They're being exposed to things at a younger age that we didn't find out about until later on. Thank you so much, Kadir. Okay, so let's continue to pray for our young men and young women. Okay, so we're believing God for them. And Father, we pray even as we close today. You said if the gospel be hid, it is hid from those who are lost, whom the God of this world, small g, has blinded their minds. We thank you that our young people are able to see. And we thank you that what the enemy wanted to be a setback, it will be a setup that through all the attacks that we will see a revival with our young people like never before cause revival to come to our young men and women cause revival to spread throughout this land all over the world cause a revival cause our young people to catch fire cause our young people to fall in love with you like never before what the enemy meant to destroy them it will only cause them to catch fire we thank you for the revival amongst our young people. We thank you for what you're doing in the lives of our young people. We thank you that our young people will not be statistics. We thank you that our young people will be respectful. We thank you that the spirit of rebellion is broken over their life. We thank you for the spirit of submission. We thank you, Lord, right now that they will have direction. They will walk in wisdom. They will walk in power. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. You told us to train up our children in the way that they should go. Forgive us, Lord, when we did not do the things that we should have done. Forgive us when we did not uh, correct. Forgive us when we were too afraid to say this or that. Forgive us, Lord. And we thank you now as you begin to turn things around in the lives of our young people. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Forgive us, Lord, when we uh, allow the government, we allow the state, we allow the school to direct us in what we should be doing. There's already a manual. There's already a manual. The Bible the Bible teaches us what we need to do concerning our children. We will not let schools, we will not let the state, we will not let the government dictate to us how we will raise our children. But we will follow the pattern that you have given to us. And that pattern is to bring life and life more abundantly. So we thank you, Lord that our children will begin to live an abundant life in the mighty name of Jesus. All right. Thank you so much. We love you all. Thank you for your love, your support. Thank you for tuning in this morning. We pray that you have a productive day today, have a fruitful day, but most of all, walk in victory because he always causes you to triumph. Expect favor all day. God bless you.